Hello and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about turn any API into an event driven engine. So let's jump right in. Make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project. Do you want to earn $100,000 a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just 3 months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. Alright, what is event driven APIs? I am all about APIs. I think all software should be API first with intentional thought and effort on the contracts and path that make up your application. Designing how users interact with your API should be a conscious and well thought out endeavor because that's how your customers will get their impression of you. The problem with many REST based APIs is that they tend to be synchronous. You make a call and wait for response that doesn't always work the best with our async workflows. Of course, it's necessary for enrichment and fetching data, but for things like the late put or something, sometimes even a post, getting that response back isn't necessary. If you don't need a response and intend to call the service and move on, you are following a fire and forget approach. AWS makes communicating with APIs in this manner a breeze. Though the use of even bridge API destinations, you can invoke an HTTP endpoint as a target of an event bridge rule. This means you could simply drop an event on an event base bus and carry on with your workflow as the HTTP endpoint is called asynchronously. Pretty nice, right? I was building out API destinations and even bridge rules by hand for a Memento integration the other day and thought that there had to be an easier way. There are only a few AWS resources involved with an API destination and most of them can be reused if they are targeting the same API. So I turned my eyes toward my open API spec. All right, converting open API specs to API destination. I am a huge advocate of open API. When written properly, they contain all the information you need to fully integrate with an API. It contains server or environment information, security schemes, endpoint definitions, request and response schemas, and a list of all parameters, query header, and path. You could pass it at any time. Turns out, this information is all you need when building API destinations. You need the full invocation, URL, path parameters, query string parameters, headers, and authentication information. There's a room here for a happy conversion process. I initially tried to convert my specs to cloud formation via node script on my machine. I got that working in pretty short order but didn't think it would be used by others with their specs. Something about running a JavaScript a script on a local machine put people off a bit. So instead, I have decided to work on a GitHub action so you can incorporate it in your CI pipeline to run as you make updates to your spec. This action will automatically take your API definition and create a cloud formation script you can use as a one-click deploy to add even bridge rules and API destination in your AWS account. You can use this cloud formation or put it behind a launch stack button that opens up the cloud formation console and prompts you for deployment variables if necessary. Let's look the action definition and understand some prerequisite for your open API spec. Action definition. To use the action in your workflows, you can add the following step in your pipeline. So here's the example. Let's talk about the name description and whether these parts are required. Spec path. Path to be open API spec required. Blueprint. Path to template file you like to use as a basis. Useful if you have authentication parameters to provide. Not required. Environment. Value in the description field of a server in your open API spec. 
used to get the base path for the API destinations default to the first server if none is provided not required. HTTP methods, comma separated list of HTTP method to convert to API destination example, get, post, put, delete, not required. Resource prefix, prefix to use all generated resources, not required. Output file name, the file name for the generated output default to the template.yaml if not provided, not required. It's a relatively simple action and each one of the optional field has a meaningful default. All right, open API requirements. One thing I like most about OAS is the little room for ambiguity. It is a clear specification that defines exactly what you can and can't have throughout the entire file. Because of this, we can make assumptions when building integration and transformation because we know the format and location of all data we need to get to. So let's talk about the optional fields you need to include in your spec for this action to work. So number one is you must include at least one server in your spec. These represent your environment's dev stage prod. You pass the value from the description of a server in the environment argument of the action. This tells the action what the base URL is for your API. Number two is include an operation ID for every endpoint. This uniquely identifies the path and HTTP method giving us a detailed type of for event bridge. Number third is any supported query string parameter must be defined in the spec. This will be used to build an input transformer for your event bridge rules. Of course, the rest of your spec needs to be properly defined like a path defi definitions and path parameters. So this is the example spec. So here's the example of whole open API spec in YAML file. So you can see how parameters headers are written over here query strings are here written over here this is the example all right what is event bridge events once you deploy the generated cloud formation stack you can immediately start invoking your endpoint via event bridge Using the data from your spec, event bridge rules map values from an event payload into your API endpoint. Let's take an example endpoint from a theoretical open API spec that adds an injury report to a football player. So here's an example. This endpoint has a path parameter of player ID and a query string parameter of follow-up update. It also requires a JSON payload in the body of the request with the type and injury properties. If we were to trigger this endpoint via our event bridge rule, it might look something like this via the AWS SDK version 3 for JavaScript. So here's the example. You can see we have used the operation ID as the detailed type of the event. The path and query parameters are root level properties in the detail and our request body is contained in a message property. That's it. This will asynchronously invoke our endpoint while we carry on with our workflow. So thank you for watching this video. I love this form of invocation because it opens the doors to many possibilities including direct integration with the step functions instead of invoking the call in lambda functions or proxy API gateway endpoint drop and even instead. So simple and it just worked. So don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. To joining our course, you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com. Thank you.